بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد A person who is lost requires a guide to get to his destination especially when the journey is long provisions are limited the road is dangerous one has to find a truthful and honest guide that will not deceive him or rob a person of the very assets that they possess but such a person is very scarce and that scarce person is such that he knows the road he will provide the transport provide the provisions and even provide security Sayyid al-Kawnayn Ahmad al-Mujtaba Muhammad al-Mustafa Rahmatul lil-Alameen Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our truthful guide wa ma yantiku anil hawa for a person to become a wali the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one is dalil a wilayat a proof that a person is a wali a friend of Allah which is a karama Karamatul Awliya Haq The miracles of the Awliya are truthful But what's the maqsad? The object of a wali is to follow sunnah The object of a wali is to follow sunnah That's the purpose, that's his priority And Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam They also had a dalil and a maqsad The dalil of a Nabi is a mu'jiza so Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam were given mu'ajizat as a means to prove the authenticity. But that is also not a, a primary constituent, it is not a primary factor. The maqsad, what was the maqsad of nubuwa? So primarily it was da'wat, those that accepted there was tazkiyah and ta'aleem. So primarily da'wat was the maqsad of nubuwat. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ This is my way. I call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mu'ajizat which weren't a priority. There was such power in the mu'ajiza of a Nabi that Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's one finger caused the moon to split. That was a dalil of nubu, a proof. But the maqsad and the, the objective of nubuat, if this is the power of the fragment of a fragment, then when we come on to maqsad of a nabi, what power and what force there will be? Likewise, if we come on the maqsad of a wali, what power and what force there will be? So either we believe Allah in his Rasul, and we, we, we know about the power, we know about the potential, but who's got the yakin about it? So the systems of the dunya, the systems of batil, the pro propaganda of batil has influenced us so much that we've gone far from reality. There's no, there's no sign, there's no apparent sifat in the ummah that can justify. So we should not get caught in this propaganda. And can you imagine the barakat and the blessings? If we have to follow the awamir of Allah, follow the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, what ripples, what waves, what tsunamis will it cause on earth? So we shouldn't be caught by this deception of dunya, deception of batil. They say once the president wanted to test the different departments of his force, so they released a rabbit into the forest and different organizations, the CIA, the FBI and the LAPD were put to the test. They wanted to do, determine who was more accurate, who was more prolific in apprehending criminals. So the CIA went first, they placed an a lot of informants throughout the forest questioned all the plants, the witnesses and after their research and investigation extensively they concluded the rabbits don't exist. 
rabbits don't exist. Then the LAPD went in, they came out and they were beating a bear. And the bear was so beaten it was yelling out, I am a rabbit, I am a, a rabbit. Then it was the FBI's turn. So after two weeks they had no leads, they set the fire, they put a fire to the forest, they set alight the forest, they killed everything in it including the rabbit. And they remained unrepentant for the actions and their justification was that the rabbit provoked them to light the fire based on the consequences that if the rabbit had to be alive it would have created more negativity and more propaganda amongst the other animals in the jungle which would have caused more problems on earth and that's why they needed to set all of it alight, the entire forest, with the animals. So that's the, the, the propaganda, the, the, the methodologies of the people of the dunya. Where is Deen is Khalis? There's no hidden agendas. It's straight forward. We are so fortunate. Unfortunate are the ones who are deprived. So Barakat, blessings by following Nabi wasalam, following his Mubarak way of life. A Sahabi Hazrat Abu Zaid Ansari narrates that once Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam addressed him and said, Udnu minni, come closer. Fama Sahabi Adhi ala Rasi Nabi alayhi salam wiped his hand over, over my head and he said, he made dua, Allahumma jammilhu wa adim jamalahu. Allah grant him good looks and perpetuate his looks. Perpetuate his looks. So Abu Zaid then loved for over a hundred years and uh, some riwayat say that uh, he had just a few white strands on his beard and his entire face remained youthful. His entire face remained youthful. Some riwayat say, لَيْسَ فِي لِحْيَةِ شَعْرَةٌ He did not even have a single strand of white hair and he loved over a hundred years. A, another Sahabi, Katada bin Milhan, the narrator says that uh, I was with Hazrat Katada where he had passed away when somebody passed by the back of the room and I saw the reflection of the person who had passed at the back on the face of Hazrat Katada radiallahu anh. And that was through the barakah of the hand of Nabi alayhi salatu was was placed over his face and it always, his face appeared to be oiled. And every part of his body showed signs of aging as he grew older except his face. Every portion of his body showed signs of aging except his face. So how much power in the Mubarak hand of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam? Another Sahabi Hazrat Nabi radiallahu an when he was over a hundred years of age when he said some poetry and Nabi alayhi salam made dua for him that he said that may Allah never allow your teeth to fall out May Allah never allow your teeth to fall out and uh, he loved over a hundred years and the narrator says that uh, I saw the Sahabi's teeth even as an old man they were white as hailstones they were white فَرَأَيْتُ أَسْنَانَهُ كَالْبَرَدِ الْمُنْهَلِّ They were white as hailstones and not one of them had even broken or had become crooked. Throughout his life he always had the best set of teeth and if any one did fall out it was replaced by another even in his old age. So Baraka, so we need to understand the importance of Sunnah. Number 37, Asbab of Barakah is in sheep. 
some riwayat ittakhidhu al-ghanam fa innaha baraka whether we translate as sheep some have translated as goats they are baraka in 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 camels izun li ahliha there is honor wal ghanam baraka and in sheep there is baraka wal khair maqudun and goodness on the four locks of horses other riwayat inna min dawabil jannah these are the animals of Jannah. Yushiku ayyakuna khayra ma lil muslim ghanamun. The best wealth for a believer will be sheep on a mountain peak on a cliff where it rains on the outskirts of the city. Yafirru bidinihi min al fitan. To stay in the outlying areas and your best capital at the time, the best asset. So if Allah gives somebody tawfiq to have some sheep, to have a, a premises outside the city in the farming areas, outlying areas, then they are fortunate and mubarak. So Nabi Ali wasalam, also had sheep which used to graze near Mount Uhud and during the night they used to rest near the home. In the came is also written that Nabi Ali wasalam, kept a hundred sheep and as soon as any one number increased, he slaughtered it. And uh, he would even assign names to some of them as well. Ajwa, Zamzam, Sukya, Baraka, Warasa, Itlal, etc. And uh, there were seven goats which gave milk. As it Umayma and radiallahu anha used to tend to those goats as well. So, Every Nabi used to graze goats as well. Sahaba questioned and Nabi alayhi salam said, Yes, I also. Alama aini in sharaf Bukhari in Umdat al Qari has mentioned that Nabi alayhi salatu salam grazed goats at the age of 20. Abdullah ibn Masood narrates and he mentions that Allah subhanahu wa has kept livelihood in farming and grazing animals. So, the importance of making amal and the sunnah and to get the sifat, every Nabi did this as well. Take proper care of sheep and remove their difficulties because they are amongst the animals of Jannah. Umayhani radiallahu anha once Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam came to her and said, I do not see any item of baraka in your possession. She asked, which item of baraka are you referring to? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah has placed barakah in three things. One of them is day trees and sheep. So barakah as well. A goat in a home is a source of one's blessing. Two goats are two blessings. We can use the word goats or sheep. And three are more blessing as well. And likewise, if three goats remain in the home, in the vicinity of a person, then the angels make dua the entire night until dawn to shower mercy upon that person. Ibn Sa'd has mentioned this in his first volume, page 496. So, sheep, we should uh, try to make amal on the sunnah of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. Number 38, Kapin. We have discussed this in detail in the survival guide. But fihi uh, shifa wa baraka. In it is shifa and baraka. Fahtajimu. Ala barakatillah yawm al khamis. So, kapin. Then 39 joining ties. Man ahabba ayyub satalahu fi rizqihi. Fal yasil rahimahu. That whoever joins ties, then the sustenance will be increased, there'll be baraka. That's an entire topic on its own of joining ties. And uh, number 40, to exercise moderation. Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu. We should eat, drink and not be extravagant. The, the people who are wasteful are the, the brothers of shaitan. مَا مَلَأَ آدَمِيٌّ وِيَاءً شَرًّا مِّمْ بَطْنٍ That uh, no container is worse than the stomach of this human being. So moderation in everything, moderation in spending, moderation in uh, all aspects, in eating etc. 
So these were the asbab of, of baraka. We need to go and sit in the company of ulama, try to learn deen. There's much more. These are just uh, selected uh, narrations, selected portions. There's much more details where we need to go and sit in the company of the ulama. Likewise on the topic of baraka, and the point was that when we make in tilawat of Quran, we should make a knee of baraka. They are the asbab that will remove baraka. Al bukhl wa shuh, that greediness and stinginess. Allahumma aati munfiqan khalifan. Oh Allah, that person is generous, grant him more. Allahumma aati mumsikan talafan and destruction destroy the person who he withholds, who is stingy. Likewise, to borrow money with no intention of paying back. من أخذ أموال الناس يريد أداءها أداها الله عنه Take money, loan it, you sincerely want to pay it back Allah will make sure that it will get paid But whoever takes it يريد أتلافها Wants to just use it up and no intention to pay, pay it back أتلافها الله Allah will destroy it Likewise committing sin لم تذهب That Fahisha bihayai immodesty becomes alive except ta'oon wal awja sickness, disease, plagues will come which never was seen. So sun committing guna, etc. dispels the, the baraka and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim used to mention that uh, it takes away the baraka in life, in baraka in risk. In baraka in ilm, baraka in amal, baraka in obedience, etc., etc., etc. A person makes badwa, they are deprived. So these asbab of deprivation are many. Let us go to the ulama and try to learn deen and see how we can identify all these aspects that will be beneficial and detrimental. Wahada kitabun anzal mubarak. So Quran is full of baraka. We should make it a habit. habit. اِقْرَأُوا سُورَةَ الْبَقَرَةِ فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَ In Surah Baqarah, there is baraka. In Quran, there is baraka. And what ulama have said? عَلَىٰ قَارِئِهِ وَعَلَىٰ سَامِعِهِ وَعَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ That the person who is reading, the person who is listening, the person that are around, the family, the, the, the inmates of the house, the neighbors, and everybody connected to that Quran, there is baraka. One of the Mufassirin used to say that اشتغلنا بالقرآن ف we, we, we engage, we, we, we spend time with the Quran and making tilawat Quran and this barakat and blessings were so, we were so flooded and swamped and inundated with the barakat wal khayrat fi dunya just by making engagement with the Qur'an. Ibrahim Abdul Wahid used to say to Dhiya that uh, when, they, when he came to say that uh, studying is difficult, generally students study and they feel we can't manage etc. Then he said, أَكْثِرْ مِنْ قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَا تَتْرُكْهُ Recite Qur'an excessively and never leave it. فَإِنَّهُ يَتَيَسَّرْ لَكَ الَّذِي تَتْلُو that whatever you are seeking, proportionate to what you read of Qur'an, Allah will make your task easy. So the more Qur'an we read, whatever tasks we want to fulfill, we will see that work, that task being accomplished. And the Ayim says, فَرَأَيْتُ ذَلِكَ وَجَرَّبْتُهُ كَثِيرًا I seen that in my experience with my own eyes showed me that it was true فَكُنْتُ إِذَا قَرَأْتُ كَثِيرًا تَيَسَّرَ لِي مِنْ سِمَاءِ الْحَدِيثِ That when I used to read a lot of Qur'an, I could listen to hadith, I could write it, I could memorize it, I could benefit. وَإِذَا لَمْ أَقْرَأْ لَمْ يَتَيَسَّرْ لِي And when I never did that, it was not easy. One of the mashayikh you say, كُلَّمَا زَادَ حِزْبِي Every day I used to read uh, Qur'an زَادَتِ الْبَرَكَةِ فِي وَقْتِي 
So if you want blessings in our time, then make tilawat of Qur'an. And then he explains and goes into detail how much barakah he's seen in his tilawat. Abdul Malik ibn Umayr used to say that the abqa wa anqa nas uqulan that the most preserved people with regards to their minds are the qura'ul qur'an the, the people who make tilawat of qur'an man qurtubi used to say man qara al qur'an mutti'a bi aqlihi wa in balagha mi'a a person who frequents reciting qur'an his memory his mind will be preserved even if he lives to a hundred years so generally externally people want to preserve their face and the nur on their faces we see mentioned earlier you can use all the creams but the baraka of nubuwa likewise the mind as well tilawat of quran is so much baraka and so much blessings that even the mind gets preserved the amal for today is that a sahabi says that Nabi alayhi salam promised me something and I went there and I heard him saying May yastaghni yughnihi Allah Whoever seeks independence Allah will give him independence O may yakna yukanni'ahu Allah And whoever seeks contentment Allah will make them content Suffice and be happy what with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase Baraka for a person. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.